Oh too often, we as humans think we know best when it comes to the timing of something. The timing of a promise, the timing of a victory, or the timing of a gift. One characteristic that our modern society is slowly losing more and more of is patience. We want everything, and we want it now. But if we really reflect on it, who are we to say when the timing for something is appropriate? Can we see the future? Can we see the whole picture? Do we know the beginning from the end and how the timing of a circumstance affects the universe at large? Of course not. However, there is one who does. God Almighty sees everything and knows everything. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and the finisher. He knows exactly the perfect timing of everything since he is above everything and knows everything. The Lord works according to his time, not ours, and we ought to trust him in it. There are countless examples in the Bible where God made a promise or a prophecy, but it took years for it to come to pass in the earth. God wasn't in a rush to prove himself right. It was all working according to his time. Isaiah chapter 60 talks about the future kingdom and the glory of Zion. It is a wonderful chapter with many promises, but the final verses, verses 20 through 22 say, Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Then all your people will be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands, for the display of my splendor. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. The Lord declares that in the proper time, He will make this wonderful future kingdom come to pass. It will be done swiftly when the time is right. God is in control of history. It is His story after all. So we must wait patiently when it comes to His promises that have yet to be fulfilled or when it comes to the promises that you are waiting on in your life. Do not give up on God just because something isn't happening as quickly as you think it should. You have no idea of the bigger picture. We must learn to trust God and His timing. We must be patient and we must persevere. God is good and everything He does is good, so we surely can trust Him in every aspect of our life, including the timing of events. Look at the timing of Jesus coming to the earth. God initially made that promise all the way back in Genesis 3.15 when He said, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. And God continued making promises about a future Savior all throughout the Old Testament, such as mentioning a Savior who would forgive our sins and heal our diseases, that he'd be born of a virgin, that he would come from the line of Judah and bless all the nations, that he'd be born in Bethlehem, and tons, tons others. A lot of these were made thousands of years before Jesus actually stepped onto the earth, because God had the perfect timing for it to happen. He knew the exact time period that Jesus needed to come to earth, and when it was his time, the Lord did it swiftly. We can even look to Abraham and Sarah. In Genesis chapter 12, God promises Abraham that he would make him into a great nation, even though Abraham and Sarah could not have a child at the time. It wasn't until 25 years later where they finally had their child Isaac. See, it was according to God's timing that it happened. I'm sure Abraham and Sarah wanted the child as soon as possible, not 25 years later. In fact, we could see that they tried to rush God's perfect timing by having Abraham sleep with Sarah's handmaiden in order to provide a child according to their timetable. And this resulted in many troubles. So we need to align our timing with God's perfect timing. In its time, the Lord will do it swiftly. Habakkuk 2, 2-4 two says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. We can see in this scripture another example of a promise, or a vision, that is for an appointed time. God specifically says to wait for it, to be patient, because it will surely come. In its correct time, it will not tarry. It is God's timing that we should be striving for, because His timing is best anyway. Following His timing will always be much better than anything we could have come up with, since again, we don't see the whole picture. If you are waiting on a promise from God, or waiting on the numerous promises found in His Word, be patient and be persistent. Though it tarries, wait for it. Do not give up, because God's promises never fail. He is faithful. In its time, the Lord will do it swiftly. We can also look to David. Now, he was anointed king, but needed to wait many years and many trials before becoming king over all of Israel. He was anointed by Samuel, by God's direction, so he knew that he was God's chosen king. Of course, he would have loved to have that promise fulfilled right away, but instead he needed to be patient. He needed to trust God while Saul, the current rejected king, was chasing him down and seeking his life. 
while living in the wilderness, we can see through the Psalms that David wrote that he always trusted God. He was a man that truly trusted God's timing. And this is perfectly shown when David had two opportunities to kill King Saul, but he refused to. He instead let God be in control. When David confronts Saul and says how he could have killed him, Saul says in 1 Samuel 24, 18-20, You have said today that you have done good to me. The Lord gave me to you, and you did not kill me. If a man finds the one who hates him, will he let him go away safe? May the Lord bring good to you for what you have done for me this day. Now I know that you will be king for sure. The nation of Israel will be made strong under your power. Even Saul knew that David would one day be king. Surely David knew it, but he was in no rush to supersede God's timing. Many men would have done the opposite and would have killed Saul right then and there to seize the throne that they were promised. However, David waited for God's perfect timing. And like always, when the time was right, the Lord established David's reign swiftly. And what about when it comes to the judgment of those who are doing wrong? Many people like to say that it always looks like the wicked are winning and that God is not being swift with his judgment on them. Well, first of all, we must remember that we too were wicked at one point. Before we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we too lived according to our evil desires. And 2 Peter 3, 8, 9 reminds us that. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. It is by God's mercy and grace that he was patient with us. Thank God that he was patient with me and didn't want me to perish, but instead waited according to his perfect timing, giving me the wonderful chance to repent. Thank God that he did the same with you, and thank God that he is doing the same with our neighbor, giving them the opportunity to repent of their sins and accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. However, we do see examples of God's judgment according to his perfect timing often in the Bible. When the sin of a town or a person has reached its full measure, then God judges. For example, we see this in Genesis 15, 16, which says, In the fourth generation your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. God in his loving kindness and mercy gave the Amorites hundreds of years to repent and turn from their wicked ways. God always warns of coming judgment, just like how he sent all the various prophets to warn Israel of the incoming judgment unless they turned from their wicked ways and repented. But if they refused to listen, just like the Amorites did and just like the Israelites did, then at the correct time, the judgment will be swift. Finally, we can even look at when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead according to God's perfect timing. John chapter 11 says that Jesus heard Lazarus was sick, and verse 4 through 7 says, When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days, and then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. Jesus waited two more days before going to visit Lazarus. In the natural, it would make sense for Jesus, the healer, to go right away, as quickly as possible, in fact. However, Jesus already declared that the sickness would not end in death. He knew that the timing would be better and would give God glory and result in an even better outcome than if he went right away. Many would see that Lazarus was dead but was now raised from the dead, and as a result, they would believe. So the timing of the situation was very important, and it worked everything out for the good of everyone, something that only God's timing could do. So, brothers and sisters, we must be mindful of God's perfect timing. He has the whole world in his hands and is more than capable of working everything out for us if we just let him. If we love him and trust him, we must be patient and be assured that if God has promised it, then surely it will come to pass. In its time, the Lord will do it swiftly. Glory to God.